Okay, welcome to Lesson 7 of Module 4. Um, this is called Classification of Solutions, and we're talking about solutions to linear equations. And we have found that sometimes there is one solution. We find it by going through using properties of equality and getting the equation in the form of x equals some constant. Um, but then in um, earlier lessons, sometimes we found that it um, that the equation when we went through the steps of solving it came out with something untrue and we talked about the fact that there was no solution. So we're going to talk about how we can um, more readily classify what type of solution a linear equation is going to have. So here are three, um, you have these in your exercises, it's exercise one through three. You have these three equations and you're asked to um, go through the steps to solve these equations. So I want you to do that now and then come back and we'll talk about what you came up with. Okay, so for exercise one, it wasn't particularly surprising. We went through the steps to solve it. And you got something like... Um, 2x is equal to 8, and so x was equal to 4. So x equals 4 was a solution to this equation, because when we plug in 4, um, let's do it, we get 7 times 4 is 28, minus 3 is 25, and then 5 times 4 is 20, plus 5 is 25. So x equals 4 is a solution that checks out for that equation. So let's look at number 2 then. Um, number 2, when we went through the same steps of trying to, to solve this, we got negative 3 on the left-hand side equaling 5, which we know is not true. So um, negative 3 does not equal, you can't really see that, negative 3 does not equal negative 5, so um, we, we would say that this equation has no solution. No matter what I put in there for x, no matter what I put in for x in this equation, there, there will never be an x that works for that. Okay, then there could be a number of things on this last one, number three, that you came up with. Um, you could have come up with negative three equals negative three, which is true. Um, other people came up with 7x equals 7x, or even x equals x, or some people went all the way to zero equals zero. But the, the one thing that all these have in common is that they're true. This is true. This is true. This is always going to be true, right? If I, x is always going to equal itself, 7 times a number is always going to be the same as 7 times that same number. So <clears throat> in the case of this equation, we, we can say that it has infinitely many, and that's a lot, solutions. Infinitely many solutions in this case here. Okay, so what we want to do is to look at some characteristics of these equations and see if we can figure out what it is um, that's making this happen. What, what is true when there's one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions? Okay, so all of these equations can be written in the form, the ones we've been working on, can be um, put into the form ax plus b equals cx plus d. So, for instance, our first equation was 7x minus 3 is equal to 5x plus 5. So let's think about um, what is the, what is our a our B, our C, and our D. So in this case, we have um, A is 7, 
B is negative 3 because um, we're thinking in terms of addition, so this would be plus negative 3. C would equal 5, and D would also equal 5. Okay, so those are our, um, those are our four numbers. Now, think about the difference between, um, and I've used colors to show this, A and C, let's, let's get purple, A and C are the same type of number, and B and D are the same type of number. So A and C are coefficients. Okay, if you're rusty on this vocabulary, um, they're coefficients because they are the number that, that x, the variable, is multiplied by. So they go with the variable. So co means with, a and C are coefficients, whereas B and D, um, B and D are, they never change. No matter what X is, that term will always stay the same. So we're going to call B and D constants because they're in terms that don't have a variable, therefore they never change. They are constant. Okay, so B and D are constants, A and C are coefficients. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at um, this slide here. We're going to look at these equations. So I want you to look at these equations. You don't have these in your notes, um, but you can see them here on the screen. And work on them um, for, for a while. Try to solve them. And, and then see if you can observe any characteristics of the coefficients and the constants that would um, alert us to whether there's going to be a unique solution, in other words, one solution, uh, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and do that now, and um, then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so if you have solved these, um, should have come up with something similar to this. All of these equations here had a unique solution. They had a particular solution that you could find. All of these in the middle came up with this contradiction, so there's nothing that will make those equations true. So these were no solution. And these were the ones that came up with something that's always true, so no matter what I put in for x, those will be true. And so these had infinitely many solutions. Okay, so um, let's look at these and see what it was about the coefficients and the constants that, that made that true. Okay, so let's first look at the no solution column. Um, hopefully you notice that the coefficient of the x terms was the same in every case, negative 15, negative 15, 5 fourths, and 5 fourths. So in other words, that if we're thinking of ax plus b is equal to cx plus d, then a equals c. The coefficients are the same. Um, but in each case, the constant terms are different. Okay, so we've got 12 and negative 2, 5 and 8, negative 1 and positive 1. So B does not equal D. The constants are different. Okay, for no solution. Now for infinitely many solutions, the coefficients of the x terms are the same, so a is equal to c, but then what happened when we got, when we could eliminate those x terms by, by subtracting it from both sides, we're left with a true statement because the constants are equal. So the coefficient, coefficients of the x terms are equal and the constants are equal. So what, what students in class noticed was that these are just exactly the same expression but maybe turned around, the addition turned around or um, 
I could just rewrite 7 plus 9x as 9x plus 7. So it was the exact same expression set equal to each other. So that gives us infinitely many solutions when the coefficients are the same and the constants are the same. So what's true here? Well, in all of these, notice the coefficient of the x terms are different. So a is not the same as c. Um, the constants are also different, um, but I want to show you an example that, that helps us see that that doesn't have to be true. Um, but in all these cases, b is not equal to d. Um, so, so there's a really quick way that we can um, look at an equation, put it in this form, and then um, determine what type of solutions that equation will have. Okay, so let's look at something else. So let's look at, what if we had an equation um, 7x, let's do one that's going to have a unique solution, so we'll make the the um, coefficient of the x terms different, but we'll make the constants the same. So let's do minus 2 and minus 2. So I'm going um, to start by adding 2 to both sides of this equation. And I'll get um, that 7x is equal to 5x. And then I, um, when I look at that, I can think, I can, I can go on, I can think, well, what number times 7 is the same as that number times 5? And you might have figured out what that number is, but let's just keep going. We can go, let's subtract, um, not 2, let's subtract 5x from both sides. And we'll get that um, 2x is equal to 0. And if I divide by 2, I can see that x equals 0. So in this case where the coefficients are different, but the constants, um, wait, wrong letters here. But the constants are the same. I got negative 2, negative 2 for B and D. A and C are 7 and 5. Um, the, that has a unique solution, but that solution is going to be 0. So that's a little bit of a special case. Um, but just to know that if the coefficients of the x terms are different, <clears throat> then <clears throat> when it's simplified like this, then there will be a unique solution. Okay, now in your notes you have exercises <clears throat> 4 through 10, and you can work on those independently now. Um, you could start on this first one and come back and see exactly what's expected here, and I'll show you an example. The directions say, give a brief explanation as to what kind of solution or solutions you expect the following linear equations to have. Transform the equation into a simpler form if necessary. So to 
terms that have the variable x in them. And on the right side, we have these two terms that are constant terms that we can combine. So when we do that, we end up with this equation here, 9x plus 15 equals 9x plus 15. <clears throat> That's always going to be true. Any number we put in there, multiply by 9, add 15, is going to be equal to itself. So the coefficients are equal, the constants are equal, so there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. <clears throat> so that's all you need to do. You need to sometimes transform the equation a couple times and then state what type of solutions you would find and give the explanation. Okay, so we'll do, um, go ahead and do the others just like that, and then I'll um, put the answers up here. So here's the solution for number five. Um, when I use a distributive property to um, expand that expression there, I get 3x minus 3 times 14, which is 42 plus 1, and the right side of the equation is already simplified. Um, then I get 3x minus 41 <clears throat> is equal to negative 4x plus 5. So this is going to have a unique solution because the coefficients are different and the constants are different. Okay, so for number six, we had to do some transformation of that one. Um, but when we combined the negative 3 and the negative 7x in that left-hand side, we got negative 10x plus 32. And then on the right-hand side, we had to use the distributive property. We got negative 10x plus negative 20. So this, this equation will have no solution because the coefficients of the x terms are the same on both sides, um, but, the coefficient, or, but the constants are different. Therefore, we're going to end up with that contradiction. It will never be true. Okay, so for this next one, number 7, um, when you distribute the x, or the one-half, into the parentheses here, we get one-half times 8x is 4x, and one-half times 26 is 13. And on the left-hand side, it's already, it's already simplified to um, an x term and a constant term. So we've got 4x plus 13, um, and 13 plus 4x, which are the same expression. <clears throat> and so this one will have infinitely many solutions <clears throat> because anything I put in for x is going to make that true. So it has infinitely many solutions because the coefficients are equal and constants are equal. They are the same expression. Okay, so these next three <clears throat> um, these next three exercises here, 8, 9, and 10, are pretty open-ended. They're for you to write two equations that have no solutions, um, two equations that have one unique solution each, and two equations that have infinitely many solutions. So work on that. Um, check it out with your parent or teacher and um, see if you have done that correctly. Classify those and you'll be ready for the exit ticket and the um, problem set. Be sure to read the, the lesson summary in your um, in your uh, paperwork there with your problem set just to remind yourself that there are three different things that can happen in these linear equations in X. You can have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. And here are the characteristics of no solution and infinitely many solutions. So if neither of those are true, then the, then the equation will have a unique solution. Okay. Good luck with that, and 
We'll see you back here for lesson eight.